So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about many, many different functions, right? Now I'm going to introduce the last function of this course. You're right. Okay. The last function we're going to deal with is what we call the reciprocal function. Okay. What you guys can notice is obviously this is a re, um, you could say reciprocal, like we have our identity function at one equals x, right? That's the reciprocal of our identity function. One x, f of x equals x. This is f of x equals one over x. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to talk about how we're going to do this graph. All right. Now, when we looked at the other functions, I always said, ladies and gentlemen, you can always default. If you don't know how to graph something, you don't know what the parent graph is, we can always default by creating a rabel of ta values. Table of values. Very good. So if you're graphing, or if I ask you to graph something, and you don't know what the graph looks like, you forget, right? You're like, I just forget what, that, what the function looks like. I do not remember, Ms. McLogan, but I can maybe go and try doing a table of values, right? So we're going to want to pick some table of values. Now, picking the table of values has always been kind of arbitrary, right? Because we've always said, you know, for a linear equation, I say, plug in whatever numbers you want to. Make it simple, but plug them in. Usually did like negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. When we did a quadratic, it was a little bit difficult because what we want to do is find the vert, the axis of symmetry first, and then pick values to the left and to the right. Correct? And no, we also forgot to do we forgot to do absolute value. Forgot to put that up there. But anyways, the absolute value was the same thing. You find the ver the axis of symmetry, then you pick values to the left and right. So it's always kind of arbitrary on what values you're going to pick. Now. We can pick like negative 2, negative 1, 1 and 2, and we will do that. Um, but then we're going to start getting into some other values that I just want to go a little bit larger. So the first one I always think is a great one to pick is 0. Then we'll do negative 1 and 1. We'll do negative 2 and 2, negative 3 and 3, and then Let's do some larger ones. Let's do 10 and then 100. And then negative 10 and negative 100. And you guys will see what I mean in a second. OK? I don't know. These are positive. OK, so let's just go and evaluate for each one of these points, right? All you're doing with the table of values is you take your x and you plug it into your function. So the first one, um, let's just do f of 0. Actually, let's leave f of 0 last. Let's do f of negative 1. So 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. That's the first point, right? Let's do f of negative 2. So at negative 2, I'm at 1 half. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, what about at f of negative 3? Very good. Now, what about f of negative 10? So that's getting even closer, right? And then we would do f of 100 is going to give us. Oh, no. How are you going to draw that? Don't do it. Don't. It's too much. I don't know. I know I did program it. Uh. All right. Now, it looks like it's going to keep on getting closer and closer to 0. But ladies and gentlemen, if I keep on, if I keep on picking larger and larger numbers, am I ever really going to divide? Am I actually ever going to get 0? No. Let's think about it. If I do 1 over a negative 1,000, does that give us 0? No, you guys can plug in your calculator and see. What about 1 over 10,000? Check it out. Plug in your calculator. See how close? It's going to keep on getting closer and closer to 0. But what we'll notice, guys, it's like taking this. Keep on taking 1 half, and then keep on 
dividing it by two, right? If you had a string and you kept on cutting it in half, are you ever going to get to zero? Yes, we know that a string is finite, right? But in the core, if you guys think about an arbitrary example, if you kept on taking something and you kept on cutting it in half, you're never ever going to exactly eliminate it, right? Because keep on going up to dividing by two, you're never going to get to zero. Well, this is going to be the same similar case. We're going to get very, very close to zero, but we're never actually going to approach it, all right? Now, that's what we have right now. We'll just leave it right there. Now let's go to f of 0. So f of 0, guy, or I'm sorry, f of 1, we notice is going to be the exact same thing, but then it's just going to be positive. So we do positive 1. Or so let's plug these in. So negative 1 was negative 1. Negative 2 was negative 1 half. Negative 3 and negative 1 third. Negative 10 is negative 1 tenth. And negative 100 is negative 1 over 100. So when I do the positive values, I'm obviously going to get the positive value of the same thing. So this would be positive 1 half, 1 third, 1, oh, I'm sorry, that's 1. I don't know what that was, Alex. 1 third, 1 tenth, and 100. So let's go over here. We're going to have 1 comma 1, 2 comma 1 half, 3 comma 1 third, and oh, 10. That makes sense. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. My bad. We're not going to be able to graph 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So at 10, we're looking at 1 tenth. Okay? Now, so so far, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to kind of plot, why this is so close? If we're going to kind of plot this graph, you guys can see we're getting very, very close to our horizontal axis symmetry, or our x-axis, but then it seems like it kind of tapers off. So let's see what happens as we're getting a little bit closer. Let's see what happens when we get a little bit closer to 0. So let's try some new values. Let's do, um, how about let's pick negative 1 half and see what we get. So if I do f of negative 1 half equals 1 over negative 1 half. Now we've practiced doing this. To get a fraction off the denominator, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So at negative 1 half, I'm down 2. Okay. How about let's do f of negative 3? I'm sorry, f of negative 1 third. That equals 1 over 1 third. Multiply by the reciprocal. And you're going to get negative 3. So at negative 1 third, we're down to 3. All right. So by plotting these points, what you guys are going to see is It's going to get very, very close, very, very close to my x-axis and my y-axis. All right, And then if I was to do positive 1 half, we know is equal equal to 2. And positive 1 third is going to be equal to 3. So you guys can see this one. This graph is going to look something like this. All right. So the name of this graph, you guys remember quadratics? We call the shape of the graph a parabola. Yes? The, reciproc the shape of the reciprocal graph is what we call a hyperbola. OK? All right. Now, we still haven't examined, though, yet what happens when we have 0. What happens when we have 0? Well, yeah, it's not going to be possible. Is it, is it possible for us to have f of x equals 0, or f of x and take 1 divided by 0? Can we divide 0 into a number? No, right? We can't rewrite 0 as a multiplication problem to equal 1. So f of x, 1, that's, un that's undefined. 
And what I want you guys to understand is we need to understand two major important points here. The first major important point is that both of these graphs, they are getting closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, right? They're also, second point, they're also getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, right? Is it ever going to equal 0? Is our final, equa our final answer ever going to equal 0? No matter what number, I don't care if I do 1 over 1 million, is that still equal to 0? No, it's very, very close to 0. But we're never, ever going to get to 0. But our graph keeps on approaching 0. When we look at our values for x, we cannot plug in 0, right? We can't plug in 0. But can we plug in 0.00000001? Yeah, because yeah, that's not the value 0. right? So what we also want to notice is our graph approaches our y-axis. All right. Now, so what does it mean when a graph approaches something, but it does not actually equal that value? Or just when it actually approaches something. We'll talk about, we'll talk about asymptotes when they cross, but ladies and gentlemen, what we have just had, what we have just found is these two little red dotted lines. Okay? And this is what we're going to be, this is going to be the discussion of this topic. What those red little lines are what we call our asymptotes. Okay? So we can say the asymptote. So we have two asymptotes. Asymptotes represent, are like a line. We represent them with the dotted line because that, that's, they're not where the function is evaluated at, but they're where the function is approaching. All right? If you guys just want to think of an asymptote, an asymptote is simply defined as where your graph approaches. All right? So we look at our asymptote. We have two of them, x equals 0 and y equals 0. We know that the graph approaches the value of of 0 for y, and it approaches the value of 0 for x. All right. Now, what we've noticed, though, in this equation, do they ever equal 0? Do they ever equal 0 for x or 0 for y? No, right? So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, our domain is going to have some restrictions on it. So there's a couple ways we can write it. One way, we'll just deal with this. So now, if I was going to do my domain, the domain of this function the domain for the other functions was pretty simple, right? It's either like all real numbers or there was a restriction, positive and negative. The domain for this, you guys can see this goes on to infinity this way and it goes on to infinity that way. But the issue is there's one value where it cannot equal, right? What is the one value x cannot be? Zero. Zero. So you could say all real numbers, but x cannot equal zero. So we now have a restriction. It's not a set of numbers like negative numbers. It's not a set of numbers like positive, but now our restriction is just one single value. And then let's go and look at the range. So when looking at the range now, we can have all values going up this way, all the values going up this way, but there's one, at, there's one output that we can never, ever have, which is going to be zero. 0, or which our graph approaches. So our range is going to be all real numbers where y cannot equal 0. Okay, and that is your basic introduction. Wow, 13 minutes.